no, no, a thousand times no. Again, this hysteria, this lunatic approach, uh, Brzezinski calls it sloganeering and passivity, obviously destined for defeat. But the question is that the minority of the ruling class, the Schultz neocon group, have their hands on the levers of power. They're also in a kind of a Goethe Demerung, right? A, a twilight of the gods mood. A lot of them have been indicted. Libby has been indicted. Cheney, Cheney may be close to something like that. Lord Conrad Black has been indicted. Lots of others are in very, very bad shape. And they feel they've got to have this. Quite frankly, no one is hearing you. I don't well, I think, to be, I think some people I don't are. Mean, I, I, just, I, not well, enough. Relatively not enough, too. Not enough to make a difference. Oh. Tapes are nope. rolling. Okay. I'm doing the very best I can. This is, this is going to be edited. Don't worry. I don't want to miss anything. Joe's an okay. incredible editor. He's got prime time after Amy Goodman. You guys are on a roll. Josh okay. has read your entire book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror. Um, Michael Elner is not as familiar with it, nor you with his work. But, you know, we're going to create the new media here. Okay? It's, it's great. Okay, Josh, are you on mic level here? Yeah. You got a mic up? Am I on mic's okay. level? Okay, great. Now, Josh, do you want to make sure Josh gets to say something because he's read Webster's book? Let him say something at the beginning. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Webster, Josh. Well, uh, uh, let me introduce a two shot, please. Well, Michael had to go catch a train, but uh, we have Josh Volinsky on board. Welcome. Uh, uh, hey. Uh, we, uh, Webster has offered you the opportunity of getting a couple of words in before he gets on another roll. So uh, you've read Webster's book. You've seen the light. You think 9-11 was an inside job? Would our government do such a thing? And why would they do it? Well, I think one of the things that Webster uh, points out very clearly, uh, Webster, you hear me? Yes, I do. Yeah. Every word. Uh, yeah. You point out very clearly is Joe is saying to me, would our government do something like that? And the fact is, not only would they, but they have been doing things uh, for quite a while, through the centuries, in fact. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, Webster makes that case pretty well. Yeah, he makes that case very well that they've been doing this type of stuff for a long, long time. And also, you know, if you're gonna, if you're a victim of the boob tube, and if the, uh, uh, and you really believe in the kind of things that people like Bush tell you, of course, you think we're peace-loving people trying to bring everybody democracy and so on. And uh, Bush, of course, is a very compassionate man and tells us we're addicted to oil. Of course, he has, doesn't have anything to do with oil except making the kind of profits that are, aren't even in the dreams of most people. Well, while you're still talking, Josh, can you support what Webster was saying, that we do have to uh, mobilize the American people to deal with the impending nuclear war that will be started over Iran? Oh, yeah, very much so. And, uh, of course, we always are wrestling with the way we should do it, and we're always concerned with the way we should deal with it. And one of the ways we deal with it is the way we're dealing with it right this minute with independent community media, which, so, Joe, you're very much a part of, and I want to thank you. In fact, before I came into this room, I met a very good community person, and I said, oh, look, Joe Friendly Center. He said, Joe Friendly Center, that man is a powerhouse, a powerhouse, and he's my university of the air. <laughs> and I, I just love it. And he took a good look at you, and uh, really? he said, who's this other guy? Is that uh, Webster? I said, no, that's Michael Elner, oh. Webster. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, uh, Michael went. so one way we do it is with independent media. The other way is uh, having as many community functions and meetings as we can, showing as many documentaries as we can, on 9-11 uh, truth, and uh, so we need of a course, media war. Is that 
the idea is that I mean we're yeah. trying to get a, a handle on a, a program something new, but a media war to prevent the uh, Iran nuclear war. I think so, Joe. Yeah, I think it means, so. Uh, how about a spam war? We have to spam a lot as the yeah. money Python. Uh, <laughs> well, I was thinking of one thing. Webster's on the line. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Webster. I was thinking of one thing that we have a seminar in the studio on Webster's book. Maybe we'll give it to a group of young people to read and study and then discuss it with Webster either here in person or on the line discussing 9 11 synthetic terror. And then if we have time, we'll also go into George Bush, the unauthorized biography because that's also an opener, an eye-opener. What do you think, Joe? Well, what we're talking about... What does Webster think? Come on, he's on the line. Hi, Webster, you on the line? <laughs> yes, and I, I, I thank Josh for your very kind words, uh, and uh, I'd be delighted to participate in that any time. Let me propose just, just two things. The first question is, would the U.S. government do it? We now have this eye-opening testimony from Zbigniew Brzezinski, February 1st, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the scenario that takes us into the Middle East general war, and I would say World War III, the administration sets benchmarks for Iraq. The benchmarks are not met. The U.S. blames that on Iran. That is followed then by some provocation in Iraq or a terrorist act in the U.S. blamed on Iran. Now, Brzezinski writes this. It ought to be clear to people what he means to say here, although he doesn't say it as explicitly as he should, is he's talking about a terrorist act manufactured by the Bush regime and blamed on Iran. We had last October, right before the November election, Congressman Dennis Kucinich and Congressman Ron Paul, Democrat and Republican, far left and, and uh, conservative together, had October surprise hearings where they warned that a new 9-11 and or a new Gulf of Tonkin might be in the offing to realize this project of the neocons to start that war. So that's the situation we're in. What to do about it? Here's my plan. Anybody right. can do it. Takes three people. If Hillary Clinton shows her face in Manhattan, or Obama, or Edwards, or Giuliani, or McCain, or Mitt Romney, or any of them, Biden, Dodd, you name it, three people have to go to their meeting. Two of them go into the room, sit in different corners of the room. They ask the questions about the 9-11 fraud, this whole thing. If you look at Bush's State of the Union or his escalation speech on January 10th, it's all based on the 9-11 myth, all based on this crazy story. We don't believe it. It's been torn down, never proven. You also got to ask about the war with Iran, right? That it's got to be repudiated in advance and that active measures have got to be taken to tie the hands of Bush and Cheney to keep their fingers away from the thermonuclear button, to prevent them from setting up these fake 9-11s and fake Gulf of Tonkin. And the third person is there for what? To get it on tape. Time magazine put us on the cover. Remember? We are the persons of the year. We are the new media. So we're the ones who have to fill with content. YouTube. And now you can also go to 911truthsquad.com. And we'll have uh, the results. Right? So far, Dodd has been confronted on January 20th, Jesse Jackson in Washington, January 27th, and more of these are flowing in. How, was uh, the, how did the conversation with uh, the confrontation with Jesse Jackson go? That he dodged the issue, that he ran away, that he wouldn't speak, that he made faces and contorted himself and would not face this fact. It, it is obviously a case of clinical hysteria because the entire ruling oligarchy and its hangers-on have all come to a consensus that terrorism is the only way to keep this society together. In other words, the enemy image of the Arab and the Muslim is the principal organizing method, the, the organizing principle of the society. They would say the goal of American society is the global war on terrorism now and forever. This is a nightmare. We've got to break out of this. It's fake. It's not real. It's not true. There is no such threat. There is no foreign Arab Muslim organization that has the ability and the desire 
above all the ability to carry out something like 9-11. It simply could not be done. This was an inside job done from inside the U.S. government. The attacks came from CIA, DIA, Department of Defense, uh, the think tanks, the private military firms, and so on down the line. So the nightmare vision that Bush uses to justify everything, the global war on terror, is simply a fraud. It's, it's a prison house of the human mind. It's the myth of the 21st century in the same way that the Nazis used racism uh, as the myth of the, 20, of the uh, 20th century. Uh, Webster, yeah, uh, Webster, I'd like to ask you something. As you were talking, this question crossed my mind. Uh, Jesse Jackson and Ralph Nader uh, have the philosophy that there is a version for a gentler and kinder corporate America. What's your feeling about that? Well, I'm, I'm not uh, in, I, I don't propose to abolish private property, but it is clear that corporations are the creatures of the state. Uh, with, without a government, there are no corporations. They're created under law. And therefore, the regulations under which corporations function have got to be radically revised. And the notion of the general welfare that we have in the preamble to the Constitution has got to be made uh, imperative. In other words, it's got to be made mandatory for every corporation. Generally speaking, I'm a new dealer. I want a new deal state. That is historically the most successful form of human organization that has ever been devised. The United States from 1933 to 1968, which was somehow able to deal with Hitler, Mussolini, Tojo, Stalin, Mao, a depression, fascism, communism. Uh, it unlocked the secrets of the atom and put people on the moon. At least we think we think they did at some point. So. Uh, this, this is the form of organization that we need. And that, above all, means a state that is strong enough to reach out, if necessary, and crush an entity like J.P. Morgan Chase or Halliburton or Enron or Bechtel or ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil have $40 billion in profits for one year, and they're trampling on the blood and bones of the American people, and we have a government that is so weak and vile and pathetic when dealing with ExxonMobil that this is this kind of stuff is, is simply allowed to go on. We need a comprehensive re-regulation and deprivatization, nationalization, if you will, of many economic sectors, starting with the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has got to be nationalized, no longer the playground of economic royalists and malefactors of great wealth and rich Wall Street parasites. It's got to be brought back to serve full employment, rising living standards, and all the rest of it. So I'm a, I'm a, a, a new dealer in all of that. But unfortunately, uh, we've got to face the fact that we'll never get a chance to do any of these things if we don't stop the neocons now. Um, essentially, every month, we go into a, a kind of a war mobilization, those of us who are trying to head it off. Every time there's a new moon, every time we get the dark of the moon, there's a great danger that the U.S. and the British are going to attack. And that would be, uh, we just had it around the 18th of uh, January. I think the next one is the 17th of February. Just get out your Farmer's Almanac. Look at that new moon. Those days, that cycle, three, four days on either side maybe, that's when the attack is likely to come. Because it's more likely to come now in the winter when it's still darker rather than in the summer when the nights are much shorter. And you can take it from there. So March, April would seem to be the outside limit for when this is going to happen, also for other uh, other reasons. Webster, can we get, uh, we only got a couple more minutes, but in the remaining, the, the, of course, the new moon idea is so the sky is dark, so the planes don't get shot at as much, I guess. Right. But uh, I have heard uh, the idea that uh, Bush would, would go for like uh, 10,000 targets on the first day and do the damage quicker than we could respond to. I guess you heard that story, and I guess Seymour Hirsch uh, will come up with uh, more insider dope that uh, it's really going to happen unless, unless what? I'm still, like if... Unless we somehow break into the brainwashed, controlled environment of the primary election campaign, that we break into the media food chain. Now again, Mrs. Clinton in New Hampshire is going to have 300 media with her. This stuff can be scripted up to a point. She moves in a bubble. 
but you can penetrate the bubble and do what a citizen ought to do. Challenge her on the issues. She's a warmonger. But she's she's not supporting. She's a cheerleader for the attack on Iran. Are you expecting? She's a high priestess of the 9-11 myth. She's got to be exposed so and wait, challenged but when and she forced challenged, to respond. You think she can respond? In other words, let's assume you put to her just the words you want, like you make a good case, like how come Philip D. Zelikow wrote uh, that he's a, uh, an expert in the creation and uh, maintenance of public myth, and he, we put him in charge of the 9-11 Commission, and that's why there wasn't a legitimate investigation. What about that, Hillary Clinton? And she'll say, uh, next question, please, go away. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. can't be done. And, and if you do it right, you can get under her skin. Two minutes. This is obviously a person who is always on the verge of a rage fit. If we look at McCain on the other side, McCain is a psychotic who is generally on the verge of a psychotic episode. Mm -hmm. And this can be, uh, can be the result of an of a unwanted question under the right We could provoke him, huh? And, of course, if we have a psychopath running for president, we have a right to know that in advance. We don't want to find that out in the middle of some horrendous crisis years from now. We have a right to know that right now. So if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. But this is what citizens have to do. It's called debate. Mrs. Clinton says, let's have a dialogue. Let's chat. Let the conversation begin. Well, let it begin, but on real issues, not what's your favorite color or what's your favorite pizza topic. Public challenge. Yes. Absolutely. The other okay, thing, of course, minute. Remember that uh, Martin Luther King, we just celebrated his birthday again. Martin Luther King's last project was to talk to people about general strike. He had the Memphis garbage men striking back in the spring of 1968. The last thing he did on this earth was to try to organize a general strike for strike support for those striking black garbage men. Now we've All right, seen that's it. You're saying general strike. We're closing down here, but that's general the plan. Strike. Same general thing strike. in Spain. We had, uh, right after the NATO and So we're talking about out. the buses not running. We're talking about the electricity going off. We're talking about no water. We're talking about no business as usual. No yep. wheels turn. And everybody goes into the streets and protests until they back down. That's what you have to do. If okay. there's going to be a war, you've got to have your own war plan. But if war breaks out, if the atomic bombs start falling on Iran tomorrow, Too late. you've got to have a plan. It might be to go to Union Square or go to Times Square oh, God. or whatever it is. Have a big demonstration immediately without waiting to be told. Okay. Don't wait for Code Pink or United for Peace and Justice. They may not know what to do. You've got to have your own plan right now. Of course, it is useful to go to those peace groups and force them to have a war plan. <laughs> then we've got to have a big demonstration on the first Saturday. Have one in New York, have one in Washington, one in Chicago, one in, in uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and so on down the line. But you've got to have a notion of what you're going to do pre-war, which is the thing I want to focus on, but you've also got to have some rudimentary notion of what you do if everything fails. And the last resort is the general strike. We had it in Spain in okay, March of 2004. Okay, we did it. We got, a, we got a little extra there. We can edit it in. But uh, we don't want it, uh, any nukes dropped. Uh, it'll be kind of too late if that's already happening. That would be horrible. It's uh, what pressure we can put, we'll put. And what media we can make, we'll make. Maybe the power of art and the power of people's courage. We right. can stop the Iran war from starting. And the uh, power of 9-11 truth squads. <laughs> Uh, um, Webster, okay. can you stay on so we can do another show, just the Josh sure. Walensky show? Oh, just, okay. Just give us one minute to take rid of, take take one of those chairs out, put, keep Josh in there. I'm on, I'm on more mobilization, so I have to do anything I can. Okay, so we're going to have one more 28-minute uh, show, and we're loading the tape hey, for know. that now. Okay, Josh, you ready? Yeah, let me put the mic on. Oh, oh, oh I wondered what happened.